Hey, everybody. Welcome to an edition of ATL Prime Sports. Todd Quarter here in the northern section of Atlanta. Wayne, our producer in Memphis. JJ is out. Uh, had a family emergency, and we have the head coach of the Clayton State Lakers, Coach Vince Alexander. And, Coach, uh, welcome to ATL Prime Sports. I'm glad you could join us again this uh, during the season. Thank you, Todd. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Oh, Coach Vince Alexander, anytime, sir. And well, it's been a tough season to say the least. You have been tested between injuries and everything else. Um, you, you've done a really great job of, of keeping the team together. Uh, they've been really competitive throughout, uh, except for probably the last four games or so. Uh, where they've been, you, you lose Shaw, and that hurts not only offensively, but it really hurts defensively because you're undersized other than Sam. Sam's, um, what are you doing? Uh, are, are you making any changes? Or are you just going, like, defensively? I, I, I know that shot selection has been a, a, a problem. I know you've stressed to the team to work the ball around more, take more time off that shot clock if you're not on a break keep the other team on defense and keep us off defense. And then on the other end, uh, defensively, it seems like there's been some communication mis uh, breakdowns and man-to-man. -man. I know you've tried zone, which is something you're probably not a big fan of. From what I can tell at my tenure doing the play-by-play -play for Clayton State, uh, tell me what you're doing because you're doing a great job you know, it may not show in the one loss record, but this team still plays hard every night out. Well, uh, thank you, Todd. We are, first and foremost, we're staying positive. Uh, we have gone through a lot. Uh, losing Jalen, you know, who was just rated one of the top 10 players in the country, um, you know, was certainly a big, big loss. Uh, we, we uh, you know, didn't anticipate that. And he's had such a rough year. Started off, you know, they had some, they made a mistake on one of his uh, classes. And he, had, he missed the first four games of the season. Then he comes back. Uh, and then, you know, he had an academic issue, um, you know, at the end of the semester, which caused us to lose him. So, um, you know, that's that's very, very unfortunate. So we're, we're trying to stay very positive, trying to get our guys to believe that, you know, we, we can still compete and win uh, without Jalen. Yes, uh, it's tough. Uh, we're undersized, you know, um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, we can't change that. Right. So we have to do our best to come out and be the best that we can. I think what hurt us even more is, you know, we, we we had, you know, some injuries and, and we had some players out. We had four, three main players out for, um, you know, five games or more. And um, that, that just really hurt. So when they came back, there was no unity, no cohesiveness. And we're trying to throw that together real quick and piece it together. And then we, 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 we think we're starting to get back. And then Brian Coffey and Christian Chambers go out. And it's just like, I, I mean, Christian's our leading scorer. Right. And, you know, he goes out. And so, and prior to that, him and Brian were sick. And they didn't practice for a week. And then Christian tried to come back the day, the day of. Uh, we played Young Harris. He was trying to come back. He hadn't even practiced in a week. He had been sick. And he, he was, you know, looked pretty bad. So, you know, the main thing for us right now is to, you know, understand, you know, we we have uh, what we have and we have to be the best that we can be. And every day we got to come into practice and get better. And as you said, I'm trying to uh, stay positive. Uh, and then also, you know, we're starting to work a little bit more zone, to be honest with you. I don't, you're right. I don't like the zone, but... <laughs> 50% of our practice was working on playing zone, uh, you know, because we may have to play a lot more down the stretch. Coach, if you, you know, I, I saw you briefly in the zone. I, I remember one year 
Um, Coach Beeline at Michigan didn't have a lot of size when he come on. He played a 1-3-1. One, one. Have you thought about that? You know, I, I really haven't thought about a 1-3-1. One, one. You know, we, we have a 3-2 in and a 2-3. Um, and, uh, you know, we run those pretty, pretty, you know, in practice, we've been really working on those and trying to get better at that. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't thought about a one three one, but you know, at this point, Todd, I'm willing to try whatever I can to get this team, you know, where we need to be because this is a good team still. Uh, you know, I made them go back today and watch the first half of Georgia Tech, where we didn't have Jalen and we didn't have Dudley and, um, you know, and how well we played. It was 32-32 at halftime against Georgia. You were and, and you were ahead in the second half at one point, and I thought, holy cow, I might be doing history here. And then, yeah. and then it worked out. Yeah, second half, even, you know, with, with you know, 14 minutes left, it was an eight-point game. And, you mm -hmm. know, we had players. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're, that's where we are right now. We only have eight players, but we're going to keep working. We're going to try to throw that zone in there and mix it up a little bit. And... Um, you know, God willing, you know, we can get some things turned around. I think if we can get one or two, it'll give our guys some confidence, you know, and we can get this thing turned around and finish up strong in this conference. You know, hey, you mentioned it. There's there's still 10 games to play. There's still a lot to play for. You get in the top eight, you're in the conference tournament, and then just let it rip from there. And and, and you've emphasized that to the, to the guys many times that, hey, it takes one. Once we get one, we can get going. And and this conference is so brutal. I mean, you've got defending, uh, you know, national runner-up Augusta coming in on Saturday. Before that, you got a road trip to Flagler. Uh, you, you know, you play Georgia College, who's all of a sudden getting hot. You playing them at the wrong time. Uh, I mean, there's just one landmine after another. This might be the best Division Two conference. In college basketball, and yeah. it, you played a top fifteen non-conference schedule in the country. You played Georgia Tech. I mean, you got the team ready. You mentioned the injuries and all that, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. I know some things from the game on Saturday. You know, Brian not in there. I think he's your most improved player this year. Uh, Brian Coffee from a year ago. He's yeah. really but he couldn't play, that really hurt. Yeah, it hurt us because he controls the tempo for us. Uh, he's a, he's just a very strong leader on both ends of the floor. He's one of our best defenders. And obviously not having him out there, you could tell, you know, he's be he's one of our best one-on-one -on -one defenders. Right. Uh, just not having him was, was, was crucial. Um, you mentioned Flagler, who knocked off Augusta this past week. And so, uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier, but we're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. We're not going to feel sorry for ourselves as a team. We're going we're gonna to put our shoes on. Um, we're going to get out here and we're going to play as hard as we can. And, uh, you know, like I said, I made them look back at Georgia Tech today and they recognized a different team, you know, and they were like, wow. I, I, I can't even believe, like, we don't even look the same. No, we don't. We lose confidence, and there's no reason to lose confidence. We've played a very tough schedule. I, you, know, I, you know, I've been a, probably a little crazy this year with the scheduling, and, but I was just used to that because teams, you know, don't really want to play us. And uh, so I had to play a tough schedule, uh, but I was anticipating a different team, too. So, well, I sure you were, and, and, and Coach have, Doug Blackwell coming over from Iowa State. I got yeah. all four. Um, coming over from Iowa State. Uh, you know, he even struggled. So uh, he struggled on, he definitely struggled on Saturday. He played well the previous two games. He struggled, but you know who's been stepping up is Travis Harper. And of course, Ricardo Sams has got to be your MVP along with Brian Coffey thus far. Um, yeah. you, you know, um, and, you know, the Travis Harper, he had 16 points and 13 rebounds. I mean, he had a really good game on Saturday. Yeah. 
he's he's improving. Um, still got to work with him on the defensive end, number one. Um, yep. Then secondly, we have to work with him on uh, sometimes his shot selection is not always the greatest, uh, but he, you know, was a, a, a high profile player in high school. And, uh, you know, he's sort of used to taking any shot and every shot. And so he has to get used to playing in a system where you're not just going to come in and just shoot any shot, every shot you want. Uh, you know, you have to be a little bit more strategic. And he's learning that. But I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's made great strides. Um, and I, I think he'll continue to get better. I think he has a, a really great future for us. Um, you know, we we just need a few more guys to step up. If, if we can get Ricardo Sams going again, uh, you know, he just hasn't been the same since he's come back. He's been okay, but he hasn't been dominant like he was prior to going going out. Um, so, you know, we need to get him going again, and which we'll try to do. And like you said, you mentioned earlier, Dudley struggled a little bit on sat on Saturday. Yeah, he struggled a little bit, and so we have to try to get him, you know, going as well. But he's also got to get. He he was hurt for so long, and it was his right. hand. You know, so he had a broken hand, and he just missed so much practice and so much time that his his. His his uh, timing is just not that great right now, and so he has to understand that, and has to be patient and let it come. Uh, I, I obviously I think he's going to be a very very good player, but we we need some time. We we, we well, definitely... it's team coach. I mean, look at this roster other than a few seniors. You're 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 playing sophomores and freshmen and. I mean, that's really hard. You, you know, the team hasn't been together. I mean, it's just you've had to piecemeal this entire season from the very beginning until now. And, and now that you have the team in, uh, you know, you're going to have to go with what you got down a stretch. I only got about 60 seconds before Kalina calls in. Um, anything you want to say to the fans? We want them to show up. It's the lock-in on Saturday. You're playing home against Augusta. You've got the game against Flagler on Wednesday. Hopefully, we can get a big crowd out there. Yeah, I mean, I just hope people will uh, continue to support us just as you have. Uh, you you know the game. You understand what we're going through. I, I just hope people will continue to support these kids, support us. Uh, we have a very good team. We've just gone through a lot, uh, and we just we just need people to stand there with us and you know, if not, you know, we're going to we're going to continue to fight and fight hard. But, you know, it will be nice to to have, you know, those fans come out and support us and continue to stand behind this team. Um, well, there's, I, a, there's a lot of tradition here, coach, at, at Clayton State, and you're the guy to turn this thing around. You've won over 350 games in your career. You have had a, a fantastic run at USC Aiken. Uh, getting him to the D2 Final Four and et cetera. And um, gosh, I, I know you're the guy to turn this thing around and it's going to happen. And when it does, it's going to take off. Yes, so sir. I sure just wish team best of luck. Unfortunately, I'm out of time because Colleen is going to be calling in any second. Okay. And anything you want to say uh, uh, to the fans out there? No. Hey, thank just thank you. Thank you guys for having us on. Thanks for the support. And uh, like I said, I just hope our fans will continue to back these kids up. It's a good, it's a good group of kids. It is a great group of kids. I've, talking to, I've talked to many of them before the game. They've always come up to me and, and said hello to me. This is a great group. And we'll have Jan back before the end of the season. And hopefully when we come back on, we're going to talk about several wins. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you, Coming Thank on, you. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thank Good luck in the double header. Thank you very much. Great. Good luck on Wednesday, and I'll see you on Saturday. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Vince Alexander of your Clayton State Lakers. They play uh, Wednesday at Flagler and home against national runner up Augusta. Expect a big crowd on Saturday. There's a lock in. Come on out as we're waiting for head coach uh, Kalina Coleman 
uh, the Clayton State Lakers women's head coach. She should be on any minute. And Wayne, uh, you know, my thoughts are from this interview, this man has been there and done that. He's staying the course. He'll try anything to get this team to win. But the most important thing that I came out of is he's still positive with the kids. Yeah. Well, I tell you, if if I were anywhere near that campus and I knew there's a basketball game going on, I'd probably be down there cheering just as much as I do in the FedEx Forum. The energy level in a field house is the same as the FedEx Forum because it, it everybody's focused on the, the game and making sure the refs make the right calls. Well, there's no question. And, you know, Clayton State has honestly had a, some bad breaks in some games this season uh, that, that, that costed them potentially a, a few wins. You know, they've had so many losses in overtime. They've had three this season. They've had seven losses of five points or six points or less. Uh, I remember them up one game, one time, four points in overtime to one of the top teams in Division Two, and also without uh, you know uh, Shaw, that's uh, Jalen Shaw the rest of the year. That's a huge problem. Uh, clean, clean it just she'll be on now in five minutes. We could have kept Coach on, but that's okay. Right. Um, we had a chance to you know talk some more uh, about Clayton State men's basketball and. You know, it's something that it, there's a lot of pride in the moral area with this program. And, um, you know, you know they've, they've had some good crowds, uh, despite the the not the so-called success in the wins and loss um, uh, category. But, you know, there's been a lot of bright spots with this team. Like I said, they're extremely young. If they can improve on their shot selection and their communication on defense, uh, you, you know, anybody can beat anybody in any given night in this in this uh, Peace Belt Conference. It is a yeah. it is a monster for Division Two, and we expect Kalina Coleman to come on here in about three minutes or less. Uh, you, you know, they're at a 500 point in their season. The women are. They're three and five in the PVC. They've got big games. They'll go to they they'll go to Flagler on Wednesday, and they'll ho will host. Uh, Augusta on Saturday with a lock in and, you know, Kalina's had a heck of a career at, at, at uh, Clayton State. She's a former player. She was a tenacious defender, had a standout career at Clayton State. Uh, you know, she's taken this team. She took over for Dennis, Dennis Cox, who won the national championship in 2011 for the women. Uh, you know, she's taken this club to four tourney appearances in 16, 17, 19, and 20. She's been with Clayton State as a player or as a coach since 03. Yeah. So it only had one losing season as a head coach. She's been highly successful. Yes, they lost at the buzzard to Georgia College 60 to 58. They had just won at the buzzard against young Harris on Wednesday and they were up two by 11 points weighing twice and couldn't close the deal. They lost on a layup by a Shiloh Willis, who was the PBC conference player of the year and her sixth and seventh point on Saturday uh, was the game winner. It was a, a layup, some miscommunication. Uh, and it was a disappointing way to lose. And I, I, I know Coach Coleman pretty well. <laughs> she is stewing, but she's also turning the page and, and getting them ready uh, for Wednesday at Flagler. And, um, you know, college basketball, excuse me, you've got to turn the page pretty quick. Yeah. You lose a game, you can't be a high, you can't be too much of a low because your next conference game is coming right there. <clears throat> yeah. Now, how does that uh, lock, in, lock in, out or lock in work on Saturday? I know that the women's game is around one thirty or so, and the men's right. game is a couple hours after that. Yeah, do, they just to host, do they host some stuff in between the two games? Uh, no. You know, they will, obviously, when we get to senior night, which is uh, February 15th. And that'll be the last home game of the season. Um, but they do have little—they do have little contests in between okay. uh, 
players are warming up. So yep. they'll have a contest at halftime during one of the games. That's an excellent question. And they'll have a contest at halftime during the next one. So they do have that. I'm kind of busy at halftime uh, going uh, over anything that we want to say towards the latter part before the start of the second half, gathering the statistical information. Uh, going If it's me, I'm just doing it myself. If I, I you know, I had Tyrone. Lockhart is my uh, uh, partner on um, on Saturday, and he's a 1984 NCAA national champion um, at Georgetown. He played with Pat Ewing, uh, and and uh, you know is uh, what a career, what a college career to have to win a national title. Uh, you also played on the same team as Horace Broadnax, who is the head coach at Savannah State. And ironically, talking to Vince, he got win 350 against Horace Broadnax and Savannah State. You know, Savannah State used to be Division One in college basketball. They they went to Division Two, and uh, you know, I've had a long conversation with Horace Broadnax before that game, and you know, we talked about the challenges between Division One and Division Two, and you want to talk about one of the nicest men you'll ever meet. And sports, Horace is along with Vince, and 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 obviously Tyrone is too. It was a pleasure to work with him. It's been a pleasure to work with all the broadcasters this year. Uh, Brandon Johnson, who was an assistant at Auburn at one time, Wayne, uh, yeah. you know, been my broadcast partner, and then David Jones, who does a lot for basketball here in the greater Atlanta area, has also been my broadcast partner. He's the one that will join me. Uh, this Saturday at 1.30 for the women's game and 3.30 for the men's on the PBC uh, network. Um, he will join me and uh, we'll have the call. Uh, you can go uh, PBC. Um, oh, geez. I've typed it many times. PBC uh, sports network.com. That's where yeah. you'll be able to get myself and David Jones. On the call, and I'll put it on my Twitter account at quarter Todd C O R D E R. Uh, also at ATL Prime Sports, uh, we have you at R W Y Junior, and uh, JJ JJ get you one. And now we have Kalina Coleman coming on. And Coach Coleman, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? We're doing okay. I. Look, I was talking before you came on and then, you know, when after Vince left and, you know, I was talking about the wonderful career that you've had at Georgia State. You know, as a coach, you've taken this team to four NCAA tournament appearances, 16, 17, 19, and 20. Uh, you were an assistant for Dennis Cox, uh, won the national championship in 011, and you had really a stellar career. Uh, as a player, a, a standout career for Clayton State, you are, when, when they talk Clayton State basketball, uh, your name is right up there uh, when discussing it, Coach, and, and thank you so much for coming on. Are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you. Thank you for no, that. No, hey, no problem. I Look, I know Saturday, I... I I mean, you come off an emotional win on Wednesday against Young Harris. Uh, you, you know, um, what, uh, it was, um, gosh, uh, Jessica. No, Aiken. Yeah, we no, the Aiken. Right. Uh, Young Harris was in. You beat them before that. You only lost one home game until that point. I'm running my teams here together. You get the emotional win. Jessica May on the jumper against USC Aiken with a couple seconds left. And then you go the other way on the roller coaster and you lose on the buzzer to Georgia College up twice by 11. And Ashia Willis, the PBC freshman of the year, made her six, seven points. And you don't drop it to three and five in the conference. But the good news is you've got 10 games left. You can still finish in the upper echelon of the standings. <laughs> trying to be positive to the team like uh like coach Vince is too. Oh yes, of course. Of course, um we we have a, a don't give up mentality. Like we know that we have time. We know that we've we've lost a lot of shots either at the buzzer or 
uh, games that we were in, and then we let it slip away, uh, winning by one. It's just the roller coaster season that we've been had, we've been had in this having this year, and we're trying to, you know, stay positive and keep it together. You know, encouraging them to know, like, okay, we we still have a lot of season left to go. We just keep putting in the work, and it's just those small things that we've been covering, like in that game, just communication. Right. Whether it's communication, whether it's boxing out, you know, whether it's just defense, period. You know, basketball is a game of spurts, um, a game of runs, I'm sorry. And um, we've been going on those runs, seem like, all season. So we just hoping that we can come together and then go for a big run here this last part of the season. So that's, that's what we're hoping for. So. You know, I, I noticed, Coach, you said a season of runs. I went up to, to, to North Georgia College, and they're a beautiful stadium up there. And, they're you know, they went to the Final Four a year ago, and pretty much that same team is intact. You lost to them in the conference championship game and the tournament game a year ago. Had you won it, you would have gone to the NCAD tour- tournament. And I had a feeling you would have gone a long way because this conference is so brutal. It may be the best conference in Division II college basketball, but back to the season of runs, you, you know, you were down 19 to North Georgia. Everybody thought it was over. And I'm going, wait a minute, this yeah. isn't the Clayton State team that, I, that I've that i seen. You took the lead twice in the fourth quarter, and you didn't close yeah. it. It's It's been that, to me, has really summarized the season in a lot of ways. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that is so true. <laughs> that is so true, so true. I mean, we we get ourselves in, in holes by just um, – we dig holes for ourselves. And I, I don't know why, you know, in this game on Saturday, I, I was asking my team, like, why do y'all make it so hard on yourself? You know, like, when you have someone down, you keep them down. I'm sorry to impress them, but I always tell them you keep your foot on the net. So you keep them down. But we, for some reason, you know, we're being nice. We're being nice, playing nice nasty ball this year. And, and we let people back in the games. Or we can't just finish it because we exert so much energy trying to get ourselves back. It's like we don't have enough to close it out. And um, it's not the vision that I envision for my team, but this is what, what is um, going on with us right now. And, and we're going to keep and continue to keep pushing through. Just so that we can have a great finish, a great yeah. finish, and we're hoping for something to to um, finish better than we started. So, well, question: This team can get all the way to the conference championship game again? I have no doubt. Uh, you know, I, I remember doing the broadcast on Saturday. Me and Tyrone Lockhart were going, "Stop shooting the three. I mean, it, they kept <laughs> shooting the three, and they were what five of twenty-three. The game before, they were shooting. If they would just stop shooting the three and only shoot it periodically, you know, I know you've stressed to get that ball inside to Andre. You've stressed on Layla Davis, who, by the way, she can score 20 points in about three minutes. She is a microwave, and Andre is as tough as it comes in the point, you know, uh, down low in, in the paint. Those two right there, the focal point of the offense, if they stop shooting the threes, they're already good enough defensively to win this thing. Yeah, I know you've emphasized the stop shooting the threes. What can you do to get them to stop it? Well, we we looking. I mean, I'm not going to tell them to stop shooting the threes. I tell them to, to take the open shots, and sometimes the threes are the shot open shots. Right. But then, you know, in that game, I'm like, okay, take a couple steps in because the defense that people are playing us in, they they are packing the paint, you know, and they are they are sagging off of us. So in their minds, they're thinking, okay. I got to shoot this, but we still can get things going to the rim. We still can get it inside. I tell them, I was telling them Saturday, we got to play inside out, I mean, cut off of each other, get some movement, and we're still going to, you know, get the ball in the paint. Then we pass it out, and then you're open, wide open, then take it. They, we have a, we have a mentality of, I want the best available shot, and sometimes that, in their minds, when they're out there, the best available shot is that three. So. I'm not gonna say that all all shots. We gotta just be more our uh, bad shots. We just gotta be more selective with it. 
because Layla Davis, I, she's the best three-point shooter we have on the team, so I'm definitely not going to tell her to stop shooting the three. Right. <laughs> stop shooting no. the three. So, uh, but I understand. I understand what you're saying because the last couple of games was, like you said, five for twenty-three. The game before was one for twenty-one, and it's like, man, and that's all we have been doing was shooting. And they said, Coach, we was we was making shots at um in um warmups. This was Wednesday. We was making shots in warmups when we get in the game. We couldn't make a buy basket. And I'm like, well, hey, when you're not seeing it going in, you got to do something different. Okay, we got to get to the rim. So, but but teams have been been playing us very well with the inside because they know how we can drive it. We got some rebounders, you know. We got some slashers that can get to the rim. So they're well, trying to take it. that away from us to make us shoot it. So that's why you've been seeing so many threes. Well, but, well, the press defense has been really impressive and. You know, losing weight, that was a tough loss. To me, she's the glue of this basketball team running the offense. You know, only a sophomore. She really made her presence felt as a freshman year ago. A year ago, I mean, that that's a big loss, losing her for a couple of games. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, J, Jada, Jada Way has a concussion. Yeah. You know, not having her out there is – it's, it's huge, you know. I guess, I guess that's that's the thing. That's that's it's part of basketball, you know. When, when you start with seventeen, you know, one, you know, you're gonna have one red shirt. So I know I have yep. sixteen available players, and then after that, it just seemed like it's been a trickle down effect because I lost uh, Shakira Patterson, now we all lost Jada Wade, and then we have other issues going on. So it's like one after the other, but. There's no excuse because next man up, you know, it's, it's a team. It's a team sport. It's, it's not individual. So the ones that's not out there is greatly being missed because Jada Wade been with us for this is her third year. But um, and she while she was out there, she would do some great things for us on both ends. So her presence will be missed, um, hoping that maybe things could change and we could get her back later once. You know, she get herself back healthy. But if right. not, like I said, next man up. So Well Coach, it's it's been a it's been a you know, like you said, it's been an up and down season, but there's ten games to go. You're at Flagler on Wednesday, you're home against Augusta, there's the lock in. We want everybody to have a big crowd. Uh, this team can do uh magnificent things and I can't wait for the game on Saturday. I'm I'm out of time, unfortunately. But thank you so much for coming on. We will have you on later on during the season. I can promise you, because I know this team's going to get a home game, a home tournament game. I just know this team's going to catch fire. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to stay humble and hungry, I tell you that. We're going to get some fire lit underneath us, and, and we're going to try to make some noise. So, Thanks, yeah. Coach. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much, Head Coach. No Queen problem. And- a true Clayton State Laker here on ATL Prime Sports. And uh, I enjoyed my conversations with uh, each head coach tonight, Vince Coleman and uh, uh, Vince Alexander and Kalina Coleman. Boy, I tell you, today has been a um, uh, Vince Alexander and Kalina Coleman. I tell you what, um, uh, Wayne, it's, it's, um, uh, it's it's been a you know each program really hasn't gotten a lot of breaks this season, and uh, you, you know with head coach Vince Alexander his 351 uh, wins in his career, we know he can do it, and of course of course Kalina Coleman she has the track record to do it too. It should be an exciting season at the lock. There's still five more home games, five on the road, five at home. Come on out Saturday and show your support. Uh, Augusta coming into town, we expect a big crowd. Let's move on. Let's go to our top story, uh, Wayne. Uh, Here in the Metro Atlanta area, Chip Terry is leaving Braves television. Uh, He's leaving the television booth. He's gonna go to St. Louis and and call games for the Cardinals. He's the son of late Braves broadcaster, Skip Terry. Chip was raised in St. Louis. He went to the University of Georgia. He is the grandson of legendary former Cardinals broadcaster, Harry Terry. 
And of course, his sons, Christopher and Stefan, they broadcast games for the um, Amarillo Sod uh, Poodles uh, in minor league baseball. So this is a big story here in Atlanta. It will be interesting to see uh, who the Braves bring on to replace Chip Carey. That's some pretty big shoes. Yeah, well, it's probably a pretty big uh, story up there in St. Louis as well. It is. You know, the, yeah, no kidding. It is. It's a gigantic story in Major League Baseball, and it came across the wire not too long ago. And, and uh, wow, this is a big deal. I have no clue who Atlanta will bring it in. But the Braves have always had excellent broadcasters going back to the days. I've been here 30 years, 32 years, going back to the days on TBS with Skip on TBS and, and et cetera. Pete Van Weeren, uh, uh, you, you know, the late Pete Van Weeren, the late uh, Skip Carey, uh, the late Don Sutton. Joe Simpson, who was among that group, is still there. He's on Braves Radio, and he, is, he has done a magnificent job and We'll see who they hire. Let's go on to the NFL. Well, I'm sorry the show went longer than expected. Um, we'll, we'll be brief, and then we'll go right to our pick six. We have the final four now in the NFL. I, I, I tell you the most puzzly, you, you know, when I look at it, I made a bunch of notes. When I look at it, um, I'll just go quickly through the games. Uh, you know, the Bengals against, um, against Buffalo, they were dominant on each side of the football and Joe Burrow was just magnificent. That was a beat down Josh Allen who turned it over plenty of times in the playoffs, turned it over once on Saturday. It was costly. They were driving. Cincinnati was able to turn them away. Then we look at the uh, win for Kansas City over Jacksonville. Patrick Mahomes, he, he gutted it out on the high ankle sprain. Chan Henney, who came in, played really well, filled in for him. You know, we'll stick with the AFC since we started at first. Now you're going to have Cincinnati going to Kansas City. There will be no AFC championship game here in Atlanta. Had Buffalo won, it would have been a neutral site game. I, 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 like, I mean, I know I'm going through the pick six, but I'm telling you what, I like the Bengals' chances on Saturday. Uh, you know, I've had an eye, high ankle sprain. I've, I've done it during a playoff basketball game when I was playing basketball. And you're adrenaline. You come back on the field. You play. And then you turn around. And a couple of days later, I, Mahomes, he's going to go. I just wonder how effective he's going to be. He's not going to be the Mahomes home to be able to swing around and get out of the pocket and be able to run it and throw it. I mean, I, I see Cincinnati coming after them with that de dominant defensive line and that pass rush. And Mahomes is really going to have to step up and be careful not to agitate that, that high ankle sprain when playing. He's not going to be the same quarterback. And if he, I don't see Kansas City winning on Sunday. No, well, I, I'm, I'm right with you there. I kind of like the Bengals as well. But, um, you know, Buffalo really played flat. And I kind of anticipated them doing that. And that's why I didn't pick them in last week's pick six. Because I, I felt like they were not going to be playing with the spark that they had uh, uh, pre-postseason. Well, and, it, and, and of course, you know, it's, it's been an emotional uh, time for the Bills with DeMar Hamlin. He was there on on Sunday, and you, you would have thought that would have gave them a lift. And you're right, they really were flat, and they got beat on each side of the football pretty thoroughly. The Spangles-Kansas City matchup to me, and, and I know J.J. Seals is the same. I just don't know how effective Patrick Mahomes is going to be. Now, Chad Henney can come in there, and he's a veteran. He's 37 years old. Who knows, in any any given day in the NFL, any given time, any given game, you just never know. But I like Cincinnati on Sunday. Let's go back to the – we'll do – I'm going to save the Cowboys game for last. That was the most painful to watch. Um, it, well, the Giants was the most painful to watch, but the Cowboys, the way they lost was painful. The Eagles were dominant on each side of the line of scrimmage. What, 44 carries for like 270 yards, over six yards a carry. Gainwell, Sanders, and Scott, they were all awesome. They had mam mammoth holes to run the ball. They dominated the Giants on each side of the line of scrimmage. And Daniel Jones, he struggled mightily. Man, yeah. that was a beatdown, was it not? 
It sure was. But, uh, I, you know, being that I'm from Memphis here, uh, I really enjoyed every time Gainwell got his hands on the ball and uh, produced yards. Oh, that's right. He played at Memphis, correct? Right. Oh, he, you know what? He's their third guy, but to me, he doesn't look much different than the other two running the ball. Right. I mean, you know, that's one thing I think these teams in the NFL need to do better is it, you see somebody excelling on another team, try to get them, but then again, you know, giving up draft picks and capital, that's pretty hard. And, you know, player, the NFL teams do a great job of um, stockpiling talent and guys like, Guys like you mentioned, Gainwell, I mean, uh, you know, wow. I mean, that's depth at running back when he's your third guy. Let's go to the, the uh, oh, Nick Sarini, the uh, the uh, Eagles head coach, said Jalen Hurts is like Jordan-esque. I don't know about that. That kind of made me laugh a little bit, but uh, we'll see how Jordan-esque he is against that elite San Francisco defense on Sunday. Let's talk about the Cowboys lost to San Francisco. That, oh, this is just painful. Um, other than the Lions, you guys know I like the Cowboys, and it goes all the way back to Roger Staubach, which tells me I'm old, and you're right around my age category. So you remember Roger, I'm sure. Yeah. Dallas lost to San Francisco 19-12. to 12. It was a 12th consecutive playoff berth without a conference title game appearance. It's the longest streak since the NFL-AFL merger. My goodness. Dallas, 27 years since they've been to the NFC Championship game. That is a streak only exceeded by, you guessed it, the Lions. Miami, of course, the, uh, post Dan Marino. And, of course, Washington uh, post Joe Gibbs. Uh, three things that really that really hurt this game: Dak's first interception, San Francisco and three points that turned into that. Dak's second one while Dallas was driving to take the lead. San Francisco turned that. And, you know, Dallas could have got a touchdown. They turned that into three points. And Fred Warner, the linebacker of San Francisco, he was an absolute stud. He stood out, Wayne. He was really good. But Dak this year, what, 15 interceptions, the most in the NFL, missing five games. He vowed today to come back and be the Dak of old before he got the money. And somewhat when he had the money, to be fair. And, you know, I look, I understand why Dallas paid him. He wasn't playing like a fourth-round draft pick at quarterback, and he surely has the potential. But to me, Wayne, why didn't Dallas come with some misdirection uh, go one way, have Dak go another. Why didn't they have Dallas, um, Dak run and throw it, roll him out and give him the option to get away from that pass rush and also to be, to do the, the traditional screen pass to try to negate the pass, uh, run, the, the great pass rush of San Francisco to slow him down. You know, other than that, Dallas couldn't run the ball with a diddly poo. What, Brett, Brett Mayer missed an extra point. He had it blocked. It was low. He did make two field goals, however. The Pollard injury, Wayne, really hurt him. He had, what, six carries for 20-something yards, two catches for like 10 or whatever it was. He had a fractured fibula. That seemed to really hurt. But I don't understand why Dallas didn't give carries to Malik Davis, who looked good in the regular season despite limited chances. And Zeke only had 10 carries for 26 yards. I mean, I really can't nitpick the coaching staff to death here. They were well prepared to play. And, you know, Mike McCarthy's won a lot of games. He's won a Super Bowl in Green Bay. Um, you know, to me, I guess if I would, if I look and Dallas could look back and do some of those things differently, maybe it would be a different game. Well, obviously, Dak's interceptions just killed him. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that uh, play calling or changing the play calls or strategy from McCarthy would have made any difference uh, at the moment. I would just think that San Francisco had a tougher defense than Dallas's offense. And that's just what changed the game. Well, I'll tell you what, Dallas's day defense was magnificent. Yeah. I mean, they were rough. They were tough. They didn't allow much through the run. Uh, you know, Dan Quinn has done a great job, the former Falcons head coach, and he's up for a head coaching gig. 
And look, he took the Falcons to the Super Bowl. So, you know, there were some questionable moves made by the Falcons front office that put them in cap hell. And, you know, that's kind of hard for any coach. You know, another key to the game, the game was tied at midway through the third quarter at the San Francisco 40. Uh, you know, they elected to take the punt it instead of going for it. I might have gone for it there. Um, you know, you needed – you, your defense was playing well enough. Maybe the philosophy was to punt it and pin them deep. You could second guess that. I know Diggs with trying to make a big hit on Kittle, and Kittle was bobbling the ball down the field. He made a big play. And the media unfairly questioned McCarthy on kicking a field goal on fourth and eight from the San Francisco 25, which to me is ludicrous. You got to take the points in a low scoring game. That was a smart move by McCarthy, and it gave confidence for the kicker. And here's the one that drove me bad crazy, is when the media questioned McCarthy punting on his own 18, fourth and 10, with three timeouts, you had to punt. The only problem is the field goal unit took too long to get on the field, leaving San Francisco only time. You know, they, they could run one play and get it to the two-minute warning. If there's fault, that would be on the special teams and not punting. But I'm with McCarthy punting the ball, and I'm with him kicking the field goal here. The stuff is obvious. How about you? Yeah, well, like I said, it's it just came up at the time that uh, San Francisco's defense was better than Dallas's offense, so – well, I tell you, Dallas has some interesting decisions. Pa, uh, 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 Tony Pollard from from where? He's from Memphis. He's yeah. a, he's their best back. He's better than Dak right now. He's well, a you know, I don't, I'm not saying in this game he uh, did not excel like he did in previous games. And I, again, I think it's San Francisco had Dallas's number, and oh, there's defense. no way to get around it. I thought Pollard played well in limited time until he broke his fifth. Well, Listen, I I expected uh, more out of him. Well, it's kind of hard to run when you can't. <laughs> there's nowhere to go. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look, we'll go to the pick six because we're running late. So sorry yeah. it took so long. Uh, let's go to our games. Uh, game. Well, let's do the basketball first tonight right. came at uh, uh, Baylor. Uh, Baylor's a two-point favorite. Who you got? I ain't picking against Kansas no more, so I'm picking Kansas. Yeah, JJ took Kansas. Um, gosh, that's really tough. Um, it ain't that Baylor's tough. home, huh? It ain't that but, tough. I'm gonna pick Kansas, but I think it's tough. We've all got Kansas. Okay, let's go to Iowa, Michigan State on Thursday at seven o'clock. I'm taking Michigan State. JJ's got Michigan State. Who you got? I'm taking Michigan State, too. You can't pick against Michigan State at home. That's crazy. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker not to – oh, no, they lost a heartbreak. They beat they beat Rutgers, and then they got beat on the road by Indiana yesterday. We all have Michigan State. We all have Kansas in the points. Number one, Purdue at Michigan Thursday at 9 p.m. Who do you got? Number one, Purdue back on top, and uh, I reckon they'll stay on top unless uh, Alabama just starts beating the snot out of teams. <laughs> I'll take Purdue, too. J.J. has Purdue. The SMU at Memphis Thursday at 7 o'clock. I would imagine you'll be there, correct? Yes, I will. Yep, and we all have Memphis. Our records before we do the two football games, you're at 50, 52-5. and five. You were 4-2 and two last week. JJ 49, 53, and 5, 3 and 3 last week. I bring up the rear 47, 55, and, and, and 5. And I was 3 and 3 last week. I'm only three games behind you. But yep. it's kind of hard to catch you when we have all the same on the basketball. So you're going to be in first place no matter what next week. You'll at least be tied at the least. We'll see what you got in the football games. Uh, let's go Sunday, 49ers and Eagles, Philadelphia, two and a half point favorite Sunday at 3 p.m. on Fox. J.J.'s got the Eagles to cover. He said he was wrong many times on the Eagles and he's not picking against them now. What do you got? Eagles to cover and look, uh, Gainwell's up there and he's strong and he's ready to move the ball. Uh, so you got Philadelphia covering. Right. You know, golly, I said the 49ers would win the Super Bowl. And 
I, I guess I have to stick with it. I've, you know, I've, I got the Bengals winning it now. Um, I don't, I, I just do the way they, if they play the way they did, they should win it. I don't know. This is a tough game for me to pick. The over and under is what? 45? 45 Maybe. and a half. If 45 and a half. I think the game is under. What do you think? I think it's over. You think it's over, but we don't count that. You know what? I don't know. That 49er D is nasty. The question is how well Brock Purdy will play against that Philadelphia defense. Can the Niners run the ball? Oh, man. You know, I don't know if Philly covers. Two and a half is like right on the thing, but I, I guess I got it. I'm going to take Philadelphia to cover by a hair's whisker. I don't know if San Francisco is going on the road to win that. I said all along they would, and here I'm backing out, taking Philly. Screw that. I'll take the 49ers. I'll take them to win outright. You know, I, I, I'm going to do it because I'm a man of my word, so I'll stick with it. So we're all the same except for this game. Uh, Bengals and Chiefs, uh, Kansas City favored by a point. The over-under is 47.5. I'm going over. What are you going with that? No, I'm going with Bengals on this one. Easily. No, you- over uh oh i am i'm going to over on this game as well i'm going to go over on this one i've got cincinnati jj's got cincinnati the chiefs have a point i can't catch you guys this week this sucks but yeah. the super bowl next week we're going to have a pick six and we're going to go to six i mean the next time in two weeks next week we'll do all college basketball the week after we're going to do the pick six we're going to do college we're going to do the nfl we're going to do the super bowl We'll have six different categories. Next week is going to be all college basketball. So well, we, could, we could throw we could throw a little bit of NHL in there and uh, you know make it interesting. After after all, the uh, leaves are doing their normal thing where they're playing well, uh, and then when they get to the postseason, they'll flop. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? I would love to do three NHL games next week. JJ will cry and go. I don't know anything about the NHL, but you know what? No, he is doing three NHL games next week. That's a hell of an idea. Three NHL, three college football, or uh, three three college basketball, and we're doing it, JJ. And you're out number two to one, and the Leafs is going to be on there, and the Red Wings will be on there, and uh, we'll definitely do that. You know, you're so right about Toronto. They are second in the Eastern Conference behind Boston in points. Yep. Man, I I watched this team play. They should, at the very least, get to the conference finals, barring any entries. Uh, playing Boston, if, if, if they hold chalk, which in the NHL it never seems to be that way, would be one hell of an Eastern Conference final. Dude, that yeah. would be – that would put two original six teams in for the right to go to the Cup. That would be awesome. I'm with Just, you. My, my only thing is uh, no Penguins, no Habs. That's the only thing I don't want. <laughs> Well, being a Toronto fan, I, I figured that out. <laughs> Man, I do root for the, all the original six teams to do well because I'm an original six guy being a Red Wings fan. Yep. Um, and why did you say no Penguins, may I ask? Uh, I don't know, because I I I've know some people who are Penguins fans, and they really do irritate me. Even even when they don't win, they're irritating. Well, you know, I, I, I don't. A lot of people don't like the Penguins because I guess they complain and whine and moan, but I, I don't see it. I see a very skilled hockey team and a team in it every year. They may not make the playoffs this year. It's going to be a dog fight for them. Last I looked, they were in the eighth slot. So I know my Red Wings are getting better and they had a great 27 years. And now and now the last five or six have been a dud, but Steve Eiserman's there and He's building a, a, a culture there, and, and they're going to turn it around sooner or later. He took Tampa Bay to the Stanley Cup, not once, but twice. And, you know, it's going to take some time. Red Wings fans are going to be patient. But I'm loving that you brought hockey to the show because J.J. never wants to do hockey. He should. His dad was a St. Louis Blues fan. He likes St. Louis. He, you know, he's got, I mean – it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing game. Um, I've got a tournament to broadcast in in Detroit, a, a junior um, junior hockey tournament, a showcase in Detroit uh, in mid February. I had just, I just came back not long ago. I had twenty two games in four days, 
I still had a voice. I did a college basketball double hair the night. The night, the, the, the night, the next night after I got back and the night before I left, I did a basketball game up in North Georgia. So, and I'm going to do that again because when I go on the 16th, the 15th is when Clayton State has its uh, final home games of the season for the men's and women's. And speaking of Clayton State, that's the end of the show. I want to thank head coach Vince Alexander for the men's for coming on to speak with us and also head coach Kalina Coleman, the coach of the women's team at Clayton State. Come out and support your Lakers. Uh, they play Saturday at 1.30 and 3.30. The women, as always, is first at the lock in Morrow. And I'm Todd Corey. I'll have the call for Todd here in Atlanta, for Wayne in Memphis, for JJ. I hope everything's oh well with you and your family. This has been another edition of ETL Prime Sports. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.